Yo, good evening. What up? What up? What up? <laughs> oh, I gotta run this to Facebook real quick. We got Liz in the building. No. Liz is always showing up on Thursdays. That's <laughs> I'm changing jobs though in July. It might be I might not have the flexibility. So oh, I'll have no. more money. No, no, no. Hey. You gotta get that job before day one. You gotta <laughs> be showing up. <laughs> <laughs> um same career different placement or I, i'm advancing and i'm making more money so it's all good i love it good for you <laughs> leveling up yeah you can take credit O'Neill. you can put that in one of your things like she's making however much more money yeah oh, I, <laughs> I love that now, that's a that's a win yeah major win mm-hmm uh, okay, guys, I'm just getting this set up to Facebook. Yeah, let's. Oh, I was gonna say, let's get some wins. That is a huge win. Um, that's amazing. Why don't you give us like a, a results win as well? So that's a professional yeah. life. Give us a personal life as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I came in like not wanting to be super focused on weight loss because it can mess with my head, but this method has been really sustainable and, and works for me. And I can say that I've lost like I've lost like over 12 pounds very wow. nice mm-hmm. in and two months in two months yeah wow that's amazing six pounds that's amazing uh, and I saw you wearing those jeans looking all good in your jeans <laughs> yes I went down I went down to my like skinnier jeans or whatever yeah um wow. so that was that was cool yeah <laughs> um can I, I know there's a bunch of ladies here can I ask you your age oh yeah I'm 45 bam Damn. Damn. Yeah. possible for anyone <laughs> <laughs> that's right oh yeah and yeah. i was like i, I was like oh, i'm 45 maybe this is just how it is and now i'm like oh yeah no i just just needed to like do the right things at the right time and yeah yeah mm-hmm. okay. most of our clients are over 40 majority of them i love that yeah. Yeah. yeah um awesome awesome okay we see i see nancy i know nancy's kind of new but why don't you give us a win i know you're new but give us a win <laughs> Uh, I'm still part of the program, though. I, I've lost weight actually, and I'm um, I'm a little toner if I if yeah, and I'm prepping better. Nice. So these are all wins for me. Oh yeah, more organized. Mm. So I'm um, I'm on track ish. Good. And what about hubby? I know we were talking with hubby when I met with you. Yeah. So he's actually more active. I think he's uh, it's uh, contagious. So mm. it's. Uh, yeah, working on him as well. Good. Uh, he's supporting me and he's helping me with my meal preps, which is great. Uh, and he actually took my daughter to physio so I could be, you know, wow. focused with all of you. That's a great man you got there. I do actually have a pretty good man, I have awesome. to say. Um, do we have any Italians here? I'm Italian. I just found the best wine. I don't know who got it from me or where I got it. It's so good. Um, Farinito? What is it? Farinito, yeah. Farinito, yeah. Oh, I that is that good stuff. I'm I'm learning like how it. to make wine. So <laughs> ah, nice. Yeah, I, it's self-care day for us. For us ladies. I'm not a lady. <laughs> <laughs> I like that self-care. <laughs> Beverly, what's up? This is amazing. And you haven't even started yet. And look at you on the Zoom call. That is a very good sign. I know. I needed to get motivated with all these other beautiful ladies and oh, strong God. women here. So I was like, I am going on vacation tomorrow. So I was like, I need to at least start somewhere by being some sort of motivated. So awesome. You're with Tina, right? You're going to be with Tina? Yes. Okay. Yes. Ask Tina for the uh, stress-free travel guide. Okay. Really okay. 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 Um, awesome. And Aaron, just make sure you turn off your mic, Aaron. Thank you. Guys, can we get cameras on? It's kind of weird talking to a black screen sometimes. Lindsay, Cassandra, Christina. Thank you, Lindsay. Aaron, thank you, Aaron. And who else we got? Rebecca and Dominique. Miss Stanley. All right, ladies, here we go. This is this train took me a long time to build. Um, it's a lot of psychological stuff in there. So let's get right into it. If you guys have questions, as always, just drop it in the chat and then we can address them after. Um, please keep your mics off until we're done. And then you guys can turn them back on. So let's let's do this thing. Make sure you got your wine, okay? <laughs> I'm a bad influence. All right, here we go. 
self-care SOS, why givers are at risk, and six practical strategies for prioritizing self-care. So before we start this thing, I'm sure you guys all joined because of the title. So let me know in the chat, just say me, who here would consider themselves, oops, I just exited the thing. Who here would consider themselves to be a giver? Just say me in the chat. I want to see how many givers we got here. I'm meal prepping, but I'm listening. Nice, nice, Cassandra. Okay, me, me, me. Yeah, lots of me's. Me, yeah. 100% me, okay. So this will be great for you. Have you ever heard about the negative side of being a giver? If you guys have ever done a call with me, then you most likely have. Um, givers often have a have difficulty saying no or setting boundaries when it comes to helping others. But here's the thing. Here's like the problem. When you neglect self-care and don't prioritize your own needs, typically your mental and physical health are going to suffer. Who do we see this most with? A lot of moms, majority, almost all of them. <clears throat> These women, they feel fulfilled when you lend a helping hand, when you support a family, when you're you know, taking care of your kids, your friends, or even just random people helping them out in the street or volunteer work, whatever it may be, especially for those, and I know some of you ladies here are therapists, a lot of nurses, caregivers, teachers, right? A lot of us are taking care of our parents. Sometimes our partners are getting sick. We're taking care of our, our sick partners. You ladies are the rock and the pillar of strength for everyone around you. But here's what we have to do now. We have to break free from the chains of self-neglect and embrace the transformative power of self-care. Okay? I'm going to explain why givers have a hard time with this as well. It's going to help us understand a lot of things. Make sure you guys are taking notes. Okay, number one, selflessness. Givers typically prioritize the needs and well-being of others above their own. This is how they get fulfillment. For some people, it's money. For some people, it's cars. For some people, it's traveling. For givers, it's, it's doing for others. That's how they get most fulfilled. That's what makes them feel good and happy. As a result, oftentimes, they may neglect their own needs, viewing self-care as selfish or less important. It could even be feeling like it's taking away from others. Here's the solution to number one. You need to learn how to delegate tasks, okay? If you do not have 30 minutes for yourself, that means you have way too much on your plate. That is not normal. And we should not be proud of that, okay? That's a, a really fast track to burnout. Have the difficult conversations with the people closest to you to see how they can create some time, to see how you can create some time for yourself in your day. Here's a great example, okay? Your spouse, what is your spouse? It's your partner, I think sometimes we forget the word partner, right? Has anybody here been on a team, a sports team, right? You have partners because they're and they're assisting you. They're helping you out. There's no I in team, right? So an example of how you can do this is just asking them for, for some help around the house. Hopefully these guys are doing that already. If they're not, that's a big problem. It doesn't have to be a lot, okay? Even if it's something to give you back five minutes, that is great. Five minutes, you can spend five minutes on your phone, just going through Instagram, relaxing on Facebook, talking to a friend. Five minutes is a nice break too, right? We don't necessarily need hours on hours because sometimes, let's be real, it's not possible, right? Crazy work schedules. If you got young kids or even teenagers that need to go, you're, we're the Uber drivers, right? I think um, Nancy just said her kid is going to physiotherapy. The husband had to go and drop her off just for her to be on the call. We don't have to look at it like I'm getting back hours, but if you get back five minutes here, five minutes there, it creates about 15 to 20 minutes, even 30 minutes out of your day. That's how you have to look at this. If your kids are old enough to drive, and I'm going to ask you guys this, whose kids here are old enough to drive and are getting groceries once a week? Have you guys ever thought of that? I don't know anyone's kids that do it, but they damn well should because mine will be. <laughs> <laughs> Mine will be walking to the grocery store at five years old, getting the getting the milk and the bread, right? So this will teach them such a, an important life skill and give you back your time. I'm gonna I'm gonna admit something that's very embarrassing right now. I do not I did not know how to grocery shop until I was like 28 years old. That's embarrassing. Why? Because my mom and the woman in life always did it for me, and I did not know how to grocery shop. It took me two 
hours to go to the grocery store every single time. And I was just getting so mad. Is it this toilet paper? Is it this toilet paper? What's the friggin' difference, <laughs> right? 12 rolls or 16, I don't know, right? That's, that's embarrassing. A 28 year old man did not know how to grocery shop. So do not teach our kids to repeat those footsteps, okay? They need to be independent. You can also outsource delegating tasks. You got to pay for it, obviously. And we have a very, very good training on this. Make sure you ask your coach for it. It's a great, one of my best trainings on how to delegate tasks. Make sure you ask your coach. Okay. Number two, guilt and obligation. So givers may feel guilty or obligated when focusing on themselves. What is that? Mom guilt. We all know that. I have bad guilt. Like anytime I'm with my kids and I go on my phone to catch up on some work or, you know, I ne neglect them right after I just feel guilty, even though it's something important. I'm like, I'm supposed to be spending this time with my kids. Even though it's a really important thing, I'm supposed to be spending this time with my kids. I feel guilty. They may believe that taking time, financial resources, or attention away from their kids, partners, or friends is unfair or morally wrong. Why? Because that's how our parents raised us. Right? Especially the women back in the day, man, they didn't do nothing for themselves. Nothing. And that's why a lot of them are not in good shape these days. Our grandmas, our moms, a lot of them are not in good shape these days. This sense of duty can make it challenging for them to prioritize their own needs. It's not a bad thing. You just need to know when enough is enough. Okay, mindset hack. So we need to challenge these negative thoughts of, you know, when we get that guilt or that self-doubt arises, you got to challenge those negative thoughts. Ask yourself this question. Are these thoughts based on facts? Are they real? Or are they simply self-imposed judgments? That's a very powerful question, guys, to ask yourself. I, I personally believe we can't really control our thoughts. I think they're just random. Boom, 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 like lightning bolts. They're just random, right? I don't even think they're you sometimes. I think our actions are definitely us because we're controlling that, right? Or what we say out loud to other people, that we definitely control that. But sometimes we can't control these negative thoughts in our head. So replace the negative thoughts with positive and affirming ones, okay? For example, if you catch yourself thinking, I shouldn't spend time and money on myself, ask yourself this, invest or tell yourself this, investing in myself is important and it benefits not just me, but also my family, right? We all know that we can't pour from an empty cup. How many times have we heard that saying? We cannot pour from an empty cup. It's impossible. When the cup runs dry, there's nothing left to give, right? And then you give at that capacity of what you have left. It's not, it's not the full, ver it's just half of it or core of it. Uh, Cassandra, can you mute, mute your mic, please? I think it's Cassandra. Uh, okay, mindset hack continued. Um, contact your employer insurance and ask what benefits are covered for health and fitness. Does anyone here own a business? Let me know in the chat. Even if it's like a small business, anything, let me know. There's any business owners here? No? Okay. Um, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it, guys, is a lot of employers, they have benefits for um, the health budget or whatever they call it. I haven't done it in so long. But you can get a lot of stuff written off, guys. Okay? So you got to you gotta use those. A lot of people don't even go for massages. I'm like, you guys are crazy. You get them for free. You should be getting massages as much as you can. When I worked for the keg like 12 years ago, we had amazing benefits. I had a root canal that was supposed to cost $6,000. I paid like 50 bucks and massages. I think were like a thousand bucks a year. It was amazing benefits. I was in the massage place every single day. <laughs> so make sure you guys use those because you're actually paying into that. Okay. So use it or you lose it. So from there, you can see how to become resourceful to invest in your health and your happiness without taking time. Sorry, without taking financial resources away from the kids. Okay. That's just one way. Um, do need to eat out so often? Are there things around the house that you can sell online that you no longer need? What extra income streams can I add through investing to make more money without having to work more hours? This is really important, especially these days. Inflation is at what, five to 7%. I personally don't leave my money in the bank because of that reason, right? I invest it. I work 12, 14 hour days. So I can't work 24. So you want your money working for you and you can use that money to pay for certain things, traveling, investing in yourself, whatever it may be, right? Or even setting up your kids for success, which is very important. 
but some of that money has to go to you as well. Fear of judgment. This is a big one. Givers may feel may fear being judged as selfish or self-centered if they don't prior, sorry, if they do prioritize themselves. They may have internalized societal or cultural norms that place a high value on selflessness, especially in, in the world where moms are expected to solve everything for everyone. Who feels, feels like that? Mom is the answer to everyone's problems. Write me in the chat. Write me in the chat right now. Mom, I need to drive to the, the game. Mom, can you make me this? Mom, I'm tired. Mom, I'm sick. Mom, 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 mom. Right? It's always mom. This leads to fear of being perceived as lacking generos generosity or compassion. Fear of judgment. So you need to surround yourself with supportive individuals, okay? Seek out people who understand and are not biased. They're not judgmental. Here's the crazy thing. Sometimes our partners, sometimes our family, sometimes our closest friends judge us. Why? Because they know a past version of us and they still think we're that person. So they're holding on to that. And a lot of the time, this is the sad truth, is because they're still that same person. Nobody who's grown or is in a different level of life holds on to the past. I don't know anyone that does that. Unless you're in an argument with your spouse. Then sure, right? We all, we all try to get them there. But nobody that is at a high level of growth in their life holds on to the past because the past is gone. Have you ever had a friend that said, oh yeah, college was the best years of my life? I think that's very sad because you're, you're saying your life has not got better since college. I think that's just crazy, right? Your life every year, we're going to have some bad years. That's for sure, right? We're going to have some bad years. That's normal, right? But overall, when we look at the, the grand scheme of things, your life should be getting better. Harder, for sure. I think it gets harder the older we get. There's more responsibilities, but it should be getting better, filled with love and, and, and a, lot of, um, a lot of things that fill your cup. So studies show that surrounding yourself with a supportive network can provide reassurance and help dispel the fear of judgment, okay? I'm a big fan, not just my Facebook group. I'm in a lot of Facebook groups. Um, so I just love it. Like dad support groups, parenting support groups. Uh, we have our group. That's amazing, right? I love Facebook groups. I really do. And I learned a lot of new skills from Facebook groups because I surround myself with the right people, right? Uh, or get involved in my community. <clears throat> a lot of great community. Maybe you're from Mississauga, Toronto, Montreal. You join the Montreal mom group. They're, they're running every week. That's an amazing group. Right? They're, they're bike riding every week. Oh, I'm joining that group. Number four, high standards. Givers often hold themselves to high standards when it comes to helping others. They may feel that they have to be constantly available, <laughs> constantly available, dependable, and self-sacrificing. These things are not bad, okay? Because I personally think not a lot of people you can depend on. So if you're one of those people that people can depend on you, that you're a great person, I think. But once again, you got to have limits, okay? This self-imposed pressure can make it difficult for them to allocate time, energy, and resources to themselves. So here's a, a little trick. I actually just learned this at a, a conference I was at last weekend. I was talking to a uh, lost her business card. She was a CEO of a major uh, real estate company, Exit. Um, if you're in, Can I think they're Canada and America. It's called Exit Realty. Um, she's the CEO, a woman, just boss woman. So she taught me. She was, she taught me this. The pen and pencil method. Clarity and focus are not only important, but the keys to balancing work, family, and time for personal self care. And I don't love this word balance because I don't think it's possible. It's more so like prioritizing because there's not enough hours in a day to balance. It's too uneven and life is unpredictable. So you guys should have all got our time blocking training. Okay, that's step one, extremely important. It's changed my life, that's for sure. So before you go to this method, make sure you do that. We have this concept now, or I just learned it, but I have this concept now where there's pen and there's pencil. Okay, it's a figure of speech because we're using... Google Calendar. Pen is for your non-negotiables for the day in the week. They do not move. Your workouts, driving your kids to sports, your meal prepping, date night. Guys, I'm curious. I have a question for you. How many times a week do you guys do date night with your partner? Drop it in the chat. Actually, a month. Is it once a week? Is it once a month? 
I need some advice on this one. One X a month. Okay, Christina. Once per month, once per month, one or two times a month. Yeah, wow. Everyone, one or two times a month. What would you like it to be? What would you like it to be? Is once a month good or would you like more? Once a month is good? Okay. Once a week is best. Not Christina, once a week, once a week, once a week. Okay. For the woman that said once a week, um, oh, wow, Dominique, four times a month. For the woman that said once a week, like, why are you not doing it once a week? You can turn your mic off for a sec. I just want to hear this. Why are you not doing it once a week if you want to go out once a week? Let me, let me hear this. Who wants to start? No time. No time. Okay. Child that... care. Child care. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, my husband's a truck driver, so he's not home. Yeah. That one I can't help you with. <laughs> that one, you're kind of stuck. Um, unless you like FaceTime with candles and stuff. I don't know. I, I, we got to talk about that one. But no time, right? No time and no uh, child care. So then you got to ask yourself, right? If I'm the ruler of my life, if I run my life, I structure my day to day, I work my nine to five. After that, my day is mine, Right. I decide to put my kids in sports. I decide to work eight hours a day. I decide this. I decide that. You guys have to learn how to take back control of your life and do, or I should say live life on your terms to gain back power. And I know we're talking about something simple, like just a date night. But if you want to do a date night once a week and you think that's going to help your marriage, why would you not do that? You guys are saying you can't find a babysitter. I'm sure there's babysitters, guys. If you don't have friends and you don't have family, you go meet the neighbors. I'm sure they got kids. You vet them, interview them. Hey, how about you go out for date night on Friday? I'll watch your kids. And then I'll do it Saturday and you watch my kids. There's so many maneuvers. And that's why I like Facebook groups because it kind of teaches you that stuff. And it builds community. If you don't have a community, guys, life is really hard. Right? So we got to make the time for things that are important. And that's what I'm talking about. Pen once a week. And guys, date night can be 20 minutes. Just talking glass of wine out on the balcony. It's nice outside. That can be a date night. You don't have to go spend 200 bucks at, you know, a restaurant, right? Pour a nice bottle of wine, cook a steak on the barbecue. Kids are sleeping at eight, whatever. And just chill, right? Watch a movie. So pen is non-negotiables, guys. You got to learn how to master your time. It's really important. Pencil are things that are flexible, okay? These are activities that are flexible. You can move these around. I can't decide what those are. We're gonna talk about it in the next slide. That's, that's up to you. But your biggest priorities, they don't get moved, okay? They stay where they are. And you, you just structure it where it's like reoccurring every single week, like a date night. This will empower you to feel guilt-free around your non-negotiables because I got... I plan 30 minutes or let's say an hour for my kids. I plan 30 minutes for my husband. I plan 30 minutes for myself with my two hours of extra time in my day after work. Okay. So that's my schedule. Um, it's really confusing if you're looking at it, <laughs> but there's a reason why I structure it like this and I stack things on top. I don't even want to get into this. It's going to be a little confusing, but I'll, I'll break it down real quick. So every single day, every single minute, and this might be overwhelming for you guys in the beginning, I built myself up to this, is, is structured because I have like really bad ADHD, like really bad, okay? Um, so sitting by this window, I'm like a squirrel every five seconds, <laughs> but I don't label myself. I actually never even say that ever. You guys will never hear me say ADHD, any of that because I, it's, yeah, it's a real thing, but I am control of my focus. I'm not going to let something or a doctor say, hey, you have a hard time focusing. You're going to take these pills, which, hey, sometimes you got to take the damn pills. Sure. But I am going to be in control of my attention. And this is what serves me is running off a calendar and a, a to-do list. I really like time blocking. Three years ago, when I wasn't, wasn't doing this, my life was hectic. And by hectic, I mean hell. <laughs> it was really, really hard. My relationship was struggling. My, my relationship with my kids were struggling. My relationship with myself was su suffering for the first time ever, bad depression, because I felt like I was so overwhelmed and not getting nothing done. I felt like I was working hours on hours and hours and nothing was getting done every day. It was very uh, defeating, like a hamster on that, that, that wheel every single day, 
but I couldn't get ahead of it. So once I started doing this, guys, it's just so powerful. It doesn't need to look like this, but that's just what works for me. If a woman doesn't know what harbor she seeks, any wind is the right wind. Anyone heard that before? If a woman doesn't know what harbor she seeks, any wind is the right wind. If a woman doesn't know where she's going in life, she'll get lost taking different paths. She needs to know the vision. You don't need to know how, guys. The how is the brakes on your life. You don't need to know how. Forget the how. Just who do you want to be? Where do you want to go? And God and your actions will take you there. Not just God. You can't just pray. You got to also put in the work. Right? Because prayer is nothing without action. You got to have a vision. Uh, number five, <clears throat> lack of boundaries. Big one. <laughs> Big one here. Okay, so givers often struggle with setting and maintaining healthy boundaries. It may be challenging to say no or establishing limits when you have too much on your plate. Without clear boundaries, it becomes difficult to carve out that time or resources for self-care. What's the main topic today? Two things, time and resources. All we ever talk about, time and resources, right? Because they're limit resources are not limited, time is. Resources are abundant. Money is abundant. Resources are abundant. Time is not. So creating the non-negotiables. This is kind of piggybacking on the last one. Create a list of pencil and pen tasks. Okay, I can't do this for you. Your coach can't do this for you. You have to do it for yourself. This will be your baseline for creating the boundaries around your schedule. Okay, you got to create the list. What can be flexible and moved around? What cannot be? Workouts should not be. Meal prepping should not be. Date night should not be. Driving your kids to sports should not be. Meeting with a friend. I don't know. Depending on what kind of friend it is. <laughs> that could probably be flexible. Givers may derive, oh, number six, sorry, sense of identity. Givers may derive a significant portion of their identity and self-worth from the role as caregivers or helpers. This is who they, who they identify as. They might find it challenging to shift their focus and prioritize their own needs without the feeling of loss of identity or loss of purpose. Loss of purpose. I think a big reason for depression, guys, is a loss of purpose. I really do. You got to have purpose. You got to know your purpose, too. Okay, guys, I'm encouraging you to get your nails done. And your hair did. Hey, now everyone's paying attention. Oh, what's he got to say now? <laughs> okay, so you're going to go to your husband's wallet and you're going to take his credit card. No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so for this week, I'm challenging you all to be selfish. Okay, I'm challenging you to be selfish with your time this week. It's Thursday, next week, this week, whatever. Post a picture doing an activity you love that's just for you. It's not for any, it's not going to benefit anybody else. It's just for you. Okay. Getting your nails done, going to the Gucci store, buying a new bag, whatever you like. Right? Um, you know, go shopping, go to the salon, have a spa day. When, guys, when is the last time you had a spa freaking day? I'll wait. Cricket, cricket, cricket. That's a problem. Let's see what she said. Two, five years ago, months. Months is not, yeah, it's kind of bad. A month ago. Okay, Lucy. Good. Guys, I think once a month, you need a massage. Once a month, you need a massage. Maybe once every quarter, you go to the spa. It's the full package. The massage, you get your nails done, your, you know, whatever the girls do. <laughs> Eyebrows done, right? Microblading, microneedling, whatever it's called. Um, you just get taken care of. Okay? And yes, your husband will be paying for that. 100%. If you don't have a husband, then we'll find you a sugar debt. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm going to get in trouble for that one. Okay. So the first five ladies that post a photo and tag me in the client Facebook group, I will send you a surprise gift. First five ladies that do it. Okay. I'm going to send you a little sum sum. So let's recap this. I want Lucy's boss. Lucy's boss has a crush on her. That's why she, he's doing that. Anyway. Okay, so self-care SOS, why givers are at risk and six practical strategies for prioritizing self-care. You guys can screenshot this if you want because we're about to wrap this up. 
So number one is solution. Oh, sorry. Number one is learn how to delegate. Learn how to delegate tasks. Have the difficult conversations with the people closest to you, friends, family, spouse, um, to see how you can create some time for yourself in your day. Delegating is the only way to do everything we're talking about today. Number two is that mindset, mindset hack of challenging negative thoughts. Whenever guilt or self-doubt arises, you got to challenge those negative thoughts, okay? Are they facts or are they self-imposed judgments? Number three, surround yourself with supportive individuals. Studies show that surrounding yourself with a supportive network can provide reassurance and help dispel, dispel the fear of judgment. Because if you're hanging around people that are not going anywhere with their life, you will become that person. If you're hanging around people who are go-getters, they want to have a great career, they want to have a great relationship, they want to be a great mom, a great dad, whatever, you will become that person. Uh, pen and pencil method. This hack empowers you to prioritize effectively, stay organized, and strike a balance between structure and adaptability in your daily routine. I, I should have not put the word balance here because I don't believe in balance. Um, I actually think that's a way to, I, I think that's setting you up for failure, thinking that there is balance. It's just prioritizing, okay? What's a priority? What's not? Whatever's not, you ain't going to do. Number five, creating the non-negotiables, setting realistic boundaries is necessary for your own well-being and the effect, effectiveness in helping others. Last but not least, you got to be selfish, guys. It's okay to be selfish. You deserve to have your own time because you got to remember one thing, whoever's a mom here, you were a woman and a person, a human being before your kids. And I think we forget that. You had hobbies, you had interests, you like to do things. Don't lose those things. That's a part of losing your purpose when you lose that woman that you once were. We'll never go back there because she's in the past. You'll be a way better woman. But don't lose the hobbies that you used to like to enjoy. If it's clubbing, you might want to lose that one. <laughs> right? You might want to lose that one. But there's other ones that you can do. So take the time to be, take the time for yourself to express who you are with no judgment. Now we got Q and A. That's it, guys. That's all I got for you. Let me sip my let me sip my tea, my broccoli. All right, so let's do some Q and A, and then I gotta run. So Nancy, what are your thoughts? Actually, yeah, yeah, Nancy, what are your thoughts on that? There you go. Well, uh, my thoughts. I think um, what you say or what you presented makes sense. I mean, I do practice this with my clients. I am a clinical social worker. It sounds quite familiar. It's more difficult to do um, than, um, than to say, but uh, I think that um, <clears throat> I've gone through a very difficult year in 2022 and it has shifted my mindset. And I think that I'm integrating and practicing more what I, you know, I preach to others in, in a sense. So this is um, quite familiar to me Good. and it makes sense. Definitely makes sense. And it's all doable. Yep. You know, the reason why I build the trainings the way I do is to not just give you guys words, but to also put the action step behind it. Where I could just say, hey, go in the mirror and tell yourself you're beautiful. Like, like a lot of people do that, right? It's like, it doesn't work. It actually doesn't work because you don't I, believe yeah. it, right? It, it definitely is a change of your mindset. I mean, uh, and you have to be at that place ready to challenge yourself and to accept it and to accept the fact that you deserve it, right? That you deserve to be happy, to be have time for yourself mm -hmm. to be a little bit self that self uh, being selfless is not in a, something negative mm -hmm. um it's just a, a question of um yeah it's a, it's a, it's a mindset change yeah. you got to take actions right it's it's like people like i was saying earlier people who just pray but then they don't actually do anything to change what they're praying about it just doesn't make sense you're praying for money but you hate your job and you're skipping work or you're, you know, you're not happy with where you are instead of finding a new skill to level up and leave that career. Like Liz just said, I got a new skill now, more confident. 
I just leveled up. Thank you, O'Neill. Shit, shout out O'Neill. <laughs> We're doing a testimonial on that one, that's for sure. But you know what I mean? Like, you just got to acquire new skills. That's all it is. They're all just skills and habits. And uh, I really appreciate that, Nancy. Thank you. Uh, Miss Christina at the bottom. Par Pardello. Pardello. I just butchered that. No, you're good. Yes. Yeah. What, what's your feedback? Um, I think it's really important to remind ourselves of all the things that you're touching upon. Because um, once you're in the grind and you're a provider or a caregiver, whether you work outside the home or not, um, you just everybody, I mean, not everybody, but I tend to put myself on the back burner. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm not like a full blown martyr, but there are times where I'm like, oh, like, resentful, like, yeah, you know, my husband gets all, you know, to meet up with his friends. I like, when's the last time I saw my friends or whatever, but like, it's my own inability to communicate what I need yeah. and to take action on it. And, you know, it's not chronic, but it's good to like, hear this, to reinforce, like get help, get a sitter. Yeah. Um, hold on. Hi, sweetie. Um, and, uh, you know, like make the change, even if it's like incremental, like it's not going to go from know you're not going to go from being a, a selfless do everything type of person to like getting your nails done every day but if you just do like a little bit like once a week I don't know you know just like start there and but yeah I, I really enjoyed it thank you yeah like I said even five minutes that five minutes is like ugh, just a little break and then you can build on the five minutes and like you said you said something really great there is the communication and for everyone, I think we all know this, like uh, Nancy's a social worker, like communication is the number one reason why relationships fail. Relationships with friends, relationships in marriage, relationships with family, relationships at work, because communication, that's the number one reason. You got to learn how to communicate. And it's hard. It's really hard, right? Let's talk about difficult, difficult conversations that make you feel uncomfortable but that's actually the only way to grow is to have those conversations. And I, I, sorry, I also think you said something very wise, which is like generationally, like when I look at my mom and my grandmother, I mean, they did even, they were like always doing and giving like the men at the table didn't even get up to wash dishes in my house growing up, you know, Crazy. and like, not to say they didn't provide or whatever, but you know, we all know what we're talking about. Like they just, <laughs> chilled in the background and like the women did all the childcare, all the housework all the you know everything school stuff like and i think our generation is better but it's better yeah not. but still, you guys are still in that place though right but i think now that everyone's talking about it openly where hey this is not normal anymore <laughs> like this is it's not the same as it used to be right i think there was a lot less things to do back then a lot less pressures and stuff like that i'm sure they still had a lot of their own issues right of course but now it's kind of like an open discussion at the table where, hey, mom needs help. Hey, dad needs help too, right? We both need help. This is a partnership. So I don't want to just say that like dads don't do nothing because they do a lot too. But it's both people need to support each other with that communication that you, you just said. So 100%. Um, anyone else want to input anything before we head off for the night? I just, one thing I want to say is that I do have like a caregiving relationship with someone and yeah, and it all, everything you said was very spot on about how you feel and it is fulfilling, but then you can neglect yourself and feel guilty if you don't do everything for everyone else. So, <laughs> um, but what I've learned to do for myself, at least to start is I always just, when I think, okay, I got to do X, Y, and Z for him. I say, wait, what's the thing I need to do for myself first? And then just building that muscle so that I'm not immediately doing the reflex that I have developed over, over all these years and been conditioned as a woman to do. <laughs> yeah, um, and then that. go ahead. That's it. Just, just building that muscle. I've been working on it and it's working and yeah, it's my, my input. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I remember a conversation you were telling me about that. So that's, that's this training is for you literally, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But if we don't take care of ourselves, we can't take care of others and all of that. It's true so yeah. true my mom was a single mom of seven right seven kids i don't know i got two kids man. i feel like that's a hundred like seven kids 
and no no good men in her life no good men at all right so i didn't have any really good male role models or anything like that i just saw a woman you know busting her ass and trying to do her best to provide for her seven kids and it was hard like i was a kid and i understand that that's hard man like kids are not stupid they're actually very smart and they you know what they're best with picking up on emotions they're very in tune with emotions that's what i've noticed they might not be able to communicate the best they definitely can't right they're they'll they'll lash out or they'll just not understand how to respond appropriately but they're very in tune with emotions and that's why if there's like weird or bad people around them they don't like those people right they kind of shy away from those people so yeah i've seen it all right guys is that it for today any, any other q a or wrapping it up i just had one quick comment um i sorry i have a sick child beside me um <laughs> I I time blocked today for the first time as I tried to do it very poorly for a long time and I just know you made the comment that you know spinning and not feeling like you get anything done mm -hmm. and even dealing with a kid with a high fever all day I actually finished today and felt like I had done what I needed to do and wow. could leave without guilt which was pretty crazy because it was far from perfect but yeah I was like yeah, that makes a big difference. And being able to like even just say, okay, no, from this time to this time, we can do this. And then that's it. I'm out. It's Love good. that. Thank you. <laughs> Love that. That's amazing. Yeah. Stay away from perfect guys. Cause that's a recipe for failure. Um, just make it messy, make it messy and imperfect. And that's how you'll be successful. So that's, that's amazing. I'm really happy to hear that and just keep building on it. Yeah. Great job. All right, guys, you have a great night. Thank you so much for, you know, investing your time tonight, coming out to the training. I really appreciate it. And I would love for at least five of you guys, there's 10 people here. Five of you guys need to get your nails done this weekend. And your hubby's pain, don't forget, okay? And then post it in the group or a massage. Thank you. Something. You're welcome, Christina. Thank you. You're welcome, guys. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye, Bye ladies. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.